Law number seven, dealing with negative exponents, okay? First things first, you never, in a final answer, want negative exponents. The second important thing is that if you are ever given a negative exponent, you can create it to be a positive exponent by one simple trick, and we'll show you. And then I'll show you why. 1 over 3 to the minus 2 is the same as 3 over 1 positive 2. Two things happened here. First thing, I took the fraction, I flipped it upside down. The second thing that happened is that the sign went to be the opposite sign. So it was a minus 2, and now it's a plus 2. Likewise, if I was given this, 5x to the minus 5 over y to the minus 2, I would, because we never want to have negative exponents, I would change this. Well, first of all, this is really the same as this, 5x to the minus 5 over 1 over 1 times times, and 1 over y to the minus 2, right? Because it's multiplying. There's little multiply signs there. 5, this is okay. We have to change this. So we'll flip the fraction and change the sign of the exponent. It went from negative to being positive. Likewise here, we flip the fraction and change the sign of the exponent. And we combine it all together into a nice little package again. 5 times 1 times y squared is the same as 5 y squared. And in the basement we have 1 times x to the fifth times 1 x to the fifth. So you go from this to this by those two things. 1, flip the fraction. 2, the exponent sign goes to the opposite sign. The negative turns into a positive. Going the other direction, we flip it, and this positive 2 becomes a negative 2. They're interchangeable like that. That's how negative exponents work. And that's how you get rid of them. And remember to always approach uh, in a question when you have that, uh, flip and then uh, opposite sign of an exponent. Simple as that. Now you know, and now you know how it works.